Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're gonna go into the world of God. We can now all come boldly to the very throne of God, which is the real mercy seat. Blessed be the name of our God and King. Do you know what real freedom is? Do you know what it is that God has justified you, declared you righteous, all by a free gift of the Almighty? Man, I tell you, we're going to take you into a message now that I just finished. We just laid hands on a couple of people. And the power of the presence of God is so awesome. But the Word, I tell you, uh, the message tonight is you are not guilty. And I'm sure this thing is going to change you so that you will have boldness. That when you go to God again, God is about to answer your prayers. Don't be shocked when after this message, all of a sudden, your prayers are answered. And this is about what it's about. Are you not tired of praying and not seeing the results? Stay tuned. Enjoy the message. We love you. God bless you. Open your Bibles tonight, a very well-known portion of Scripture that you're supposed to quote. You're supposed to quote it before your third year. Romans, Romans 8, verse 31. Let's do verse 1. Therefore, there is therefore now, there is therefore now, no condemnation. Okay, there is therefore now. No condemnation. Okay? So now is ever in the present tense. So you can never go back to yesterday. You can never reach out to tomorrow. There is now. 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 So every time I miss it, that miss is already in the past. Is I'm already in the now. So there is now. So I just own now. But you know, just, you know this morning is in now. So... Now there is no condemnation. For those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, <laughs> but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's a good sermon for preachers that don't believe in life. He says, I'm free from the law of sin. We believe that. Oh man, Jesus died for my sin. What about he died for your death? He set me free from the law of sin and death. So you're supposed to be free from death as well. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Okay. Okay. Amplified, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Okay, God is a giving God. God so loved the world that he gave. What shall we then say of all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Okay, will he not also... With him freely and graciously give us all other things. Are there some things that you'd love to have? Are there some things that drive by you sometimes? And you think, I'd love to have that thing. Are there things that people dress up and you say, I'd love to have that thing. 
Are you driving past the houses? He said, I love that thing. Oh, come on, just be serious. You see a watch in the window, he said, I love that thing. You see a bracelet on somebody's arm, he said, oh, I love that thing. You know? You see a chain around somebody's neck, so, I love that thing. Do you know, things. Things don't have to go better with Coke. You can really get some things. God is a giver. And he says, if he did not spare his own son, will he not graciously, in other words, by grace, huh? give us That's an open invitation for the asking. God gave his own son. So Jesus Christ is the biggest gift. But this gift the son Jesus is the, is the gift. Okay? In in John chapter 4 verse 10 Jesus spoke to a woman at the well and he said to her, "If you only knew the gift of God, and who it is that is speaking to you, you would ask him and he would give you. So Jesus said, if you know that I am the greatest gift, you would ask and I will give. <laughs> right, let's read on. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect when it is God who justifies who puts us in right relation to himself okay he says if you want to know that God will give you all other things God says I'm going to just give you a few tips to get the stuff now in your life once and for all but number one who can judge you is that right? Who can lay any charge against you? God justified you. Okay, the old story said, just if I'd. Just if I'd never did it. Just if I'd never sinned. Just if I'd never been angry. Just if I'd never smoked. Just if I'd never drank. Just if I were never wicked. Okay? You are justified. A good scripture there would be Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14. He says, He has forever perfected those whom He justified. So who can lay a charge against you? You are forever perfect because He has justified you. So who can lay a charge against you? Oh, I just want to lay a charge against, oh, you can't. He's forever justified. He's forever justified. He's forever made perfect by the blood of Christ Jesus on the cross. So sorry, you can't lay a charge against him. And put us in right relationship. You are forever made righteous. Okay, if you want a good scripture there, you can do 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. God made him who knew no sin, gave his only son, that we can now be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, because you are forever justified, because you are forever righteous, who can lay a charge against you? Who shall come forward and accuse you? Hmm? Will God? Who acquits us? If you want to know what that means, it means he has said you are not guilty. Three. God says, I gave my only son. Is there anything that I will not give you now? So he will freely and graciously, by grace, give us all other things. Oh, open invitation for the asking. He says, okay, but I'm going to tell you what's standing in your way. 
Do you know that you are justified? Do you know that you are righteous? Do you know that you are, from my point of view, not guilty? And because of that, nobody can lay a charge against you. Let's just read on. Who is there to condemn you or us? Well, Christ Jesus, who died, or rather was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God actually pleading as he intercedes for us. So because of this, God says, there's no accusation against you. There's no condemnation. Is that what verse 1 said? Now God says you can't be accused because you're already justified. You can't be accused because you're already righteous. You can't be accused because you're already found not guilty. Because God gave His Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. How much more will He not freely give us all other things? No condemnation. So this is another thing that stands up against condemnation. He says in 1 John 3 verse 20, If my heart condemn me, God is greater and knows all things. If my heart condemn me not, then have I, and I want to say if I understand that, then have I boldness. Towards God and whatever I ask. Whatever I ask, I receive. Come on, people, you got all this stuff on prayer, and where's the answers? If I am not condemned, 1 John 3, 20, 21, I will have boldness. And whatever I ask, I receive. He says, so I have boldness towards God. So it means I ask God, I have boldness to say, Father. And he says, If you that are evil know how to give. Thank God. If you that are evil know how to give, how much more will your father give? Hebrews 11, 6 says, If I go to God, I must believe that he is, I am. That he is. In other words, I am. I am what? I am your shepherd, I'm your provider, I'm your leader, I'm your peace, I'm your guide, I'm your banner, I'm your protector, I'm your lover, I'm your fountain of living water, I'm your light in your world, I'm your bread in the world. I am, I am, I am that. Okay? He says, must believe that he is, and if I go to God and believe that he is, he is a rewarder. Now, Romans chapter 4 says, if I work to get it, I will not get a reward. But if I don't work and trust grace, then I'm rewarded because of grace. So uh, listen to Hebrews 10 verse 35. He says, Cast not away your boldness, which have a great recompense of reward. So boldness towards God, bring me whatever I ask. Remember 1 John chapter 3. So Hebrews 10 says, if I keep my boldness towards God, it'll bring me a great recompense of reward. God wants to bless you, reward you. God wants to do great things for you. But you know, he says in the Amplified, how much more will he not graciously, by grace, give us all things. So everybody says, it's by grace. It's by grace. Now remember, by grace are we saved, by faith is not of ourselves. It's a gift. But listen to this grace thing. We have a Christian school on the ACE principle. They have a system that is called a merit system and a demerit system. And because this has been in our schools for hundreds of years, it went over into the homes. So this is how most children are brought up and taught in homes and in schools. So Merit says, if you were good today, you carried the teacher's bag. 
You stood back for a girl to walk in front of you into the door. You pushed your chair back when you stood up. You, you picked up the papers on the playground. You get merits. When you have 10 merits, you have double play time. So instead of 50 minutes, you can go out 30 minutes where the others got to come back after 15 minutes. Okay? Okay. You didn't push your chair back. You get a demerit. You bumped a little girl out the door. You get another demerit. You threw a paper on the floor. You get another demerit. So if you have 10 demerits, you miss your playtime. Here you get extra playtime. Here you miss what you have. So we train our children. People do. On a merit and demerit. If you sit still all day when mama comes back from the shop, I give you lollipop. Come back, everybody was quiet. Right, give out lollipops. While you're licking, the servant comes and says, Madam. (laughs) While you were out, they broke the CD player. Yeah, bring back the lollipops. Bring back the lollipops. (laughs) She said, Daddy, I'd love to have a bicycle. I'd really love to have a bicycle, right? If for the whole term this year, you never fail a test, I'll buy your bicycle. So yeah, little Johnny is doing his best to get, you know, good marks. So the end of the term, he comes and says, Daddy, I passed all my tests. No, first bring me, bring me the proof. 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 Wow, man, that's good. Bicycle. So give him bicycle. Wow, man, wow, wow, bicycle, okay. Okay, bicycle. Little Johnny's happy, he's got his bicycle. Little Susie come out the back door, and Johnny says, "Eh, eh, 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 I got a bicycle. Eh, 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 eh." That's, hey, 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 bring back the bike. So we train people. If you behave good, you get blessed. If you behave badly, you'll be cursed. So the church teaches the blessings and the curses, the blessings and the curses, the blessings and the curses. So people are always watching not to be cursed, watching not to be cursed. God says, oh, 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 my things work on unmerit. We call it grace. It means you cannot be good enough to earn it You cannot be bad enough to miss it. You only need boldness. Because of the fact that he said you are justified. He said you are righteous. He said you are not guilty. The boldness towards God. Bring me a great reward. The reward is whatever. Is it good? Let's go to Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. For when God made his promise to Abram, he swore by himself, since he had no greater bond to swear, saying, Blessing, I certainly will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. So there's nothing about a curse there. God didn't say, Abram, if you don't behave good, sorry, go back to your land. Abraham, if you don't go do good, give me Isaac. Hmm? No, God said, I'm going to bless you. That's my idea. That's my desire. That's my plan for you. I want to bless you. And so it was that Abraham waited long and patiently realized and obtained it. There it goes, verse 17. Okay? No, verse 18. This is verse 18. This was so that by two unchangeable things, the promise and the oath, in which it is impossible, Impossible, impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us. <clears throat> Even when the prophet Balaam started turning to fortune telling. 
Yeah, the one translation said, a fortune-telling spirit. Okay, so uh, Balak, Balak came to him and said, Balak came to him and said, uh, uh, can I pay you to curse the people of Israel? So, yeah, take me to the mountain. They slaughtered the bulls. They made an offering. And, you know, they did the whole thing. They threw the stars. They light the fires, shoot up the crackers. You know, they, you know. And he stood up and he said, the whole house of Israel, as I see you today, you are blessed of God. But I say, hey, oh, well. That was not the thing. You know, so a second time and a third time, eventually the Bible says, so, so you Balak stood up in Deuteronomy, you know, Numbers 23 verse 19, Numbers 23 verse 19, he said to Balak, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken and shall it not come to pass? Come on, same in the book of Romans. He says, let every man be a liar so that God can be true. Okay? God is true to his word. You know, he says, you know, the word that comes out of his mouth, Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, shall do what it's sent for. It shall be prosperous therein. Do we really believe that? Let's read on. It's impossible for God to lie. For us, we... Listen to this man. Who have fled for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Okay, he says... Okay, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I pray that you might be strengthened with might, the same sort of thing there. I pray that you might be strengthened with might in the inner man. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So that you can know the length, breadth, depth, and height, so that you can be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 19 and 20. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far and above all that you can think the amplified uses the word even dare to ask or think so God says you you think the thought watch me man so why doesn't we watch it why can't we see the hand of God in motion? Why? Oh no, your sin is separated between you and your God. No, brother, that was the law people. The grace people are justified, are righteous, are not guilty. No accusation, no condemnation because of that boldness towards God. Whatever I ask, I receive. I have a great recompense of reward if I hold the boldness to ask. God didn't spare His only Son, gave Him. How much more will He not give us all other things? Okay, let's, let's go for it. He says, so that we can grasp and hold and fast that He said before us. Now we, verse 19, we, we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip. It cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. A hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. And here is Romans 8.34, just in other words, where Jesus has entered in for us. A forerunner, having become a high priest forever after the order or the rank of Melchizedek. So, behind the veil, the most holy, the very presence, okay, in the holy of holies, God's secret place. Psalm 91. 
<laughs> now, what did he say there? He says, we have fled, verse 18, for refuge, way to. We flee for refuge. Now, for those who know the stories, it's there in Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua, and in Samuel, and in Kings, the cities of refuge. Remember that they had to build, that God spoke to Moses, then again to Joshua, and then later it was there in Solomon's time again. The cities of refuge. And whenever, did you ever notice that cities of refuge had to be built square? 200 by 200 by 200 by 200. Just for interesting sake, the most holy square. City square. Perfection square. Saints in heaven on earth square. Zoop, 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 zoop. So if anybody fled to the city of refuge... And somebody was on their trail to come and kill them because they committed some sin or murdered somebody. If they came into the city, the guy that was on his track had no more hold on him. So outside, he was still guilty of the murder. But when he entered the city of refuge, he's not guilty. So he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There I shall say of the Lord, my rock, my fortress, he is my refuge. I will find shelter under his wings. His angels shall protect me. He shall guide me and guard me. No evil shall befall me. Nothing shall hinder me. Oh, no plague shall come near my dwelling place. Length of days. Whoa! Twice he calls it in Psalm 91, my refuge, my refuge. Where? In the secret place. So Jesus is there. So I have boldness towards God because Hebrews 4.14 says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy to find grace to get help. Because we have a high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our weaknesses. Hebrews 10 verse 19. Let us come boldly on a new and living way to the most holy. Oh, by the blood of Jesus through the veil which is his flesh. Oh man, we have boldness. And if we get there, nothing, nothing is impossible nothing is impossible oh man he created everything by and it was let there be and there was now you sit and struggling with that little prayer request Lord if you can see fit in your divine infinite mercies if somewhere along the line I can find grace. If one day you think I'm worthy, would you help me to get a city golf? God says, there's, there's Bentleys out there. There's Mercedes and stuff out there. Now you're struggling, you're, you know, Chico. In the most holy presence, the very holy of holies, we have boldness. It doesn't open once a year. It doesn't open 5 a.m. Brothers and sisters, if you can't get up 5 o'clock in the morning to call on the name of the Lord, don't think you're going to make your day. Listen, brother, I make my day if I pray or not. I don't make my day because I prayed. I make my day because he paid the price. He's watching over me. If I'm too late to pray, I'll pray tonight. And I'll tell him on the way to work. Father, we'll see each other tonight. I'm not ugly. But people get so condemned. They watch. Oh, I forgot to pray this morning. Ooh, I forgot to pray. You know. Maybe a car's going to run over me. You know, maybe a brick's going to fall from the building. And if something happens, I know it's because I didn't pray this morning. You lie, you, you lie. You are charging yourself and you're already not guilty. 
you are laying a charge against yourself and you're already not guilty. People phone me and they say, don't you, don't you think you push this grace thing too far? <laughs> what? You know how far God pushed the grace thing? He nailed his son to the cross, man. And he says, because of that, he will give you all other things. God, you can think I'm worthy. He says, you're not, you're not. that's why I died. But now you are already accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1. You are already accepted. I love all you justified, righteous, holy, perfected saints of God. That's good news. I remember, I remember 1980, I was sitting with T.L. Osborne in his lounge there in the United States of America. He invited me to come stay with him in his house. And we were sitting there, he canceled all his meetings, and he said, Brother, the only thing you must always tell people is the good news. He says, Jesus said, go preach the gospel. He said, I never leave it out in a crusade. The word gospel means good news. He said, when I think of good news, I always see somebody in maximum prison ready to be going to the gallows tomorrow. And they come in and open the cell doors and say, you're free. Yes. And you say, no, 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 I'm, I'm be, my execution is at 10. They say, no, you can go. You say, what? I've been sitting here for seven months waiting for my trial. And now my trial is over. I've been found guilty. I was there. I, did, I committed the murder. They say, no, uh, you know, do you know Jack Russell? <laughs> Not the fox terrier. No. Oh, yeah. We were in school together. Oh, he just went to the gallows this morning for you. He said he'll die. In you. No, he can't go. He's not guilty. Yeah, but now we already took a life, so you are now free. He says, that's good news. Jesus, we're not guilty. But he became guilty to make you not guilty. He took your judgment and condemnation to set you free. Hmm? Okay. 20, 25, 25 verse 4, Job. Who then, how then, how then can man be justified and righteous before God? Or how can he who is born of a woman be pure and clean? 26, but Job answered. 27, Job continued his parable and he said, as God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment. Verse 6, my righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. John 3, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. For no one can do these miracles except God be with him. Nicodemus, Pharisee. Jesus said, you must be born again. Yeah. You what? I'm trying to find out, you know, are you sent from God because the miracles is, you must be born again. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time? He said, Nicodemus, if you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom. Oh, man. How will this happen? He said, if you're not born of the Spirit and of water, you will never enter the kingdom. How can this be? He said, man, I'm trying to talk to you about earthly things. And you struggle to understand. What will happen if I talk to you about heavenly things? He said, you know, no one ever ascended to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven and is in heaven. He said, but just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, Nicodemus, here it comes. One of these days you'll see me hanging on the cross. And if you see that and you believe, you'll enter the kingdom, you'll see the kingdom, you'll have the kingdom advantages, you'll have the kingdom privileges, you'll have the kingdom rights. Nicodemus, you'll be born again and 
nothing shall be impossible. If God didn't spare his own son, but give him up, how much more will not freely give us all things? So Nicodemus, I will be lifted up on the cross. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is judgment. If I am lifted up on the cross, I will draw all judgment to me. So Job prophesies. He says, my judgment has been taken away from me. How, how was it taken away? Acts chapter 8. There's this eunuch sitting on his chariot driving through the Gaza desert. And there's Philip, you know, and he's running through the desert. And the Spirit says, go join yourself to that chariot. Jumps on the chariot. He finds the man reading out of the book of Isaiah. And the portion which he read was this. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, but he opened not his mouth. And he said, tell me, sir, of whom does the writer write about himself or someone else? And, you know, Philip started telling him the good news of the gospel. And he said, in his humiliation... Now, Philippians 2 says, he humbled himself to be obedient unto death. So the humiliation of Christ was the cross. In his humiliation, judgment was taken away. And who shall now declare that generation? Who will declare the, Acts chapter 8, who will declare the generation that will realize judgment has been taken away, Christ died, you are justified, you are righteous, you are not guilty, no accusation, no condemnation, have boldness, get your reward, step into the holy of holies, God is about to give you all things freely, graciously in blessing I will bless you in multiplying I will multiply you, I'm about to you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain oh let it rain oh open the floodgates of heaven God is about to pour out a flood of supernatural blessings on his church and give you exceedingly abundantly far and above let's do Romans 5 therefore now Romans chapter 5 brought about the reformation 500 years ago I mean this is what Martin Luther read when he had the revelation that the just shall live by faith. That's what got him up to nail that 95 theses to the church door in Wittenberg in Germany. You know, people say, what is this? You know, and Luther stood up, man. What a man of God. You know, how did it come? Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith. That is all. That is what Martin Luther read. Why? Because everything was works. Father, I, I have sinned wickedly today. Oh, bring me five bucks and it'll be okay. Go watch the crucifix in the garden and scrub ten steps to the church door. Clean all the windows, plus five bucks, and you're okay. It's true. They had to pay and work. Hmm? Father, I have wickedly sinned. Kiss my feet. But before you kiss it, you've got to pay two bucks. Oh, just two bucks. You okay, kiss my toes. You are free. So Martin Luther said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus, by whom? Also, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. Come on, what did we read in Hebrews chapter 6? We have this hope that stand as an anchor behind the veil in the most holy of holies. It cannot slip. It cannot break down. No matter who steps on it, God says, just come up. Ask me. I'm about to give you whatever you want. Verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. 
Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified, Hebrews 10, 14. He has forever perfected those who are justified. By his blood. Come on, Hebrews 9, 14. If the blood of bulls and goats could cleanse those by the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Come on. He says, for, for if we were enemies, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Remember Romans 8, 31. Huh? Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. That's, I've got to read this quickly, otherwise I'm going to preach on it again. For that all have sinned. For until the, until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the fear of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Okay, if you struggle to understand what I just read, he said, Adam had one offense and he had to die. He said, you had many offenses and you are free. Lord, I believe. Oh, Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Do you believe? Yes. And Lord, I receive. Oh, Lord, I receive. All things are possible. Only receive. Okay, it's one thing to believe, but if you really believe, you will receive. I take it. I take it. I take it. I take it. Close your eyes. You in your house, close your eyes, close your eyes. Say I'm not guilty. I'm, not guilty. I'm, justified. I'm justified. I'm righteous. I'm, righteous. I'm, free. I'm free. I'm righteous. I'm, righteous. I'm justified. I'm, justified. I'm, perfect. I'm perfect. I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. I can have all things. I take it. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. I think it's just too much. Let's close with uh, Job 22. Verse 21, Job 22. Acquaint now yourself with him. Agree with God. And show yourself to be conformed to his will. And be at peace. By that you shall prosper. And great good shall come to you. I just read a book on prayer therapy, about halfway with it. And another two that I'm reading on dreams simultaneously as I read a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. All written by Christian psychologists. And it gripped me this week when they said, the greatest hindrance in people getting their answered prayers is the feeling of guilt. That's not me, that's the psychologist. 
I would say, offenses and condemnation and stuff like that. But at the end, when you bring it down, it's a feeling of guilt. Hmm. You feel guilty. In other words, you feel accused. In other words, you feel condemned. You feel judged. Job says, my judgment's been taken away. Therefore, I will not let my righteousness go. I will cling to it. Job, your, though your beginning was small, the richest man in the east, your latter days will greatly increase. You had double as much as before. Job. You have seen the patience of Job, says James. Chapter 5. And you saw the end result of the Lord with him. How God blessed him and restored his fortunes. I will restore to you the years. Not just the things, the years. God says, I will restore the years, the canker worm, palm worm, caterpillars destroyed. You know, God wants to restore. God wants to give. God is about to bless you. God is about to answer your prayers. God is about to open the floodgates of heaven. God is about to say, is that all you want? I'm going to beat you to that. I'm going to give you far above what you even dare. To think or pray. I dare not ask that of God. God says, above all, I dare you. I'm going to give you far above what you dare to ask. God. Do you know this little Catholic boy? For those who didn't hear it. You know, the Catholic boy. Went to his room and he prayed. He said, Jesus, I really want a bicycle. If you give me a bicycle, I'll never sin again. So he stood up and he walked out. He said, sure, you'll never be able to keep that. I mean. So he walked back and he said, sorry, Jesus. But if you give me a bicycle, I'll be very disobedient to my mother from now on. And he got up and he thought, we will not be able to stick to that one either. So he quickly ran to the church. And he grabbed the statue of Mary and he wrapped it up in a blanket and put it under his bed. And he prayed. He said, Jesus, if you don't give me a bicycle, you'll never see your mother again. Right? Uh, for those who didn't hear it, I thought it was good. So he got his bicycle. Okay. Come, let's go on. Verse 28. Job 22, verse 28. If you agree with God, and he's going to give you abundance of stuff, then thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. The light shall shine upon thy ways. 20, 23, verse 3. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Hebrews 4 and Hebrews 10, the mercy seat, the throne of grace. Hmm? I would order my course before him. I will fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me. And I would understand that he would say unto me, Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he will put strength in me. Therefore the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Listen, I read the Amplified. If I know where to find his seat, the throne, the mercy seat, would he plead against me with his great power? No, he would listen and give heed to me. There, there is a place. There, the righteous one could reason with him. So I should be acquitted by my judge forever. Verse 14. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. If God be for us, who can be against us? 
He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all to die on the cross, how much more will he not by grace freely give us all other things? Keep that boldness. It have a great reward when you go to God. There is no accusation, no condemnation. Christ died. He's risen. You are justified. You are righteous. You are not guilty. Come into the Holy of Holies. The intercessor, Jesus Christ, is waiting to plead your case at the Father and to say, I want to give you exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that you can even dare to think or pray for. God is about to open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will not be able to contain. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, my Father. They caught that woman right in the act of adultery. They didn't hear that she was sleeping around. They caught her there. Say, yeah, but monkey. In the act. Changed my whole life. Brought it to Jesus. Said, this woman is caught in the act of adultery. The law says, kill her. Jesus said, right. She's the one without sin, start killing. So they all go. So Jesus says, where are those people that accused you? Say, huh, huh? Oh, no, they're all gone, Lord. Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Just go. Huh? But Moses, but I, I did not come to condemn the world, but through me, the world might be saved. What will happen if we truly embrace the message of grace? What will happen if we truly embrace the message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Oh, but brother, how are we going to get the sinners in by telling them the good news? Amen. Don't make them feel guilty. Make them feel good. Amen. Freedom. Life. Hmm? But you know. No, I don't. Jesus sets us free. People sing the songs, but man, the guilt thing. Say, I confess tonight. I confess. You and your husband join us. Say, I confess, I confess. With, my mouth. with my mouth while I believe with my heart. While I believe with my heart. Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ is Lord. He died for me. He died for me. He's risen from the dead. He He's at the right hand of the throne right in the most holy place. Right now, making intercession for me. He is my great high priest. And I come boldly to the throne of grace, knowing there's mercy for me. So I receive tonight forgiveness of all sin and unrighteousness. I receive tonight justification by grace. I receive righteousness as a free gift. I receive the Lord Jesus to be totally my deliverer, my savior, my Lord, my friend, my high priest, the apostle of my faith. Therefore, I declare there is no accusations, no condemnations against me because the same Christ that died for me is risen for me, is making intercession for me. And he says in his word, my judgment is taken away. I am declared by the righteous judge not guilty. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. We sang a song that said, so long have I searched for life's meaning. I was enslaved by the world and my greed. Then the door of my prison was opened by love, for the ransom was paid and I'm free. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. 
I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free from fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. Hmm? Remember the song that Carmen wrote 20 odd years ago? He said, if Satan comes to remind me of my past, I just remind him of his future. <laughs> Hell to. <huh? laughs> we got such a shock. Years ago, Rick Wad Godwin came to this country in 1983 to come and preach here. First time. We went to listen to him. And he stood up, opened his Bible, said, well, this is the first time in South Africa, Pastor Regarden from the United States. He stood up, he said, well, to hell with the devil, let's open our Bibles. I said, what a way to start a message. <laughs> Today it's common sense, everybody say it, but 24 years ago it was rough. Hey, you are free. 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 Not guilty. Where could you have been already? What could you have had already if you didn't feel guilty when you asked? If you didn't feel guilty when you asked. Who am I that a king should bled and die for? Hey, he decided by choice to pay the price. He decided to go in your stead so that you can be free tonight. There is therefore now. There is therefore now. No condemnation. For those that are in Christ. Why? Because if any man is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to tell you, Uncle Jack has just passed away. Oh. It means he's not, you, you can't see him again. He's there, but... Your old is passed away. Yeah.